Today I will be speaking about the role or the, the uses of the preclinical model and uh, I would like to focus on uh, how we can use this tool for the clinical biomarker development as well as uh, in the drug screening. So uh, I, I am working on the viral infection and before that uh, I worked a number of years for the brain injury or the CNS injury component and I was focusing on the both uh, uh, TBI as well as the spinal cord injury. So the my uh, the my uh, the my so my talk uh, will be basically uh, will be focused on the two parts. One is the use of uh, for the preclinical model for the CNS injury, and the second is the viral infection and encephalitis. So in CNS injury, I will for I will give you the some uh, classical example for the human studies. So just want to uh, just will show you that how the key questions arises from the key human studies, and then uh, we'll focus on the preclinical model both for TBI and spinal cord injury. And uh, just w just would like to highlight the things that uh, uh, that we focus on the treatment, uh, not only to stop the progression of the neuronal cell death, but we also focus on that how we can reverse the the mechanism of the cell death. So uh, we will focus on the key treatment strategies for that. And uh, that finally, I will just uh, include it of some example, which is the classical tool or the new advanced tools uh, are using in the preclinical model and giving the idea that uh, these type of the strategies can be used in the clinical practice. So uh, the another uh, part of the talk will be focused on the viral encephalitis. And I just started a couple of years before uh, for the development of the preclinical model for this disease and will uh, will conclude my talk by giving just some kind of the key messages that we can take from the preclinical model studies. So uh, just going before, uh, just going for the uh, development for the preclinical model, just want to give you the brief uh, outline that uh, what what uh, what are the brain injuries and what what are the things are uh, we are we are seeing here so the traumatic brain injury is basically caused by the blow or jolt to the head or the some kind of the penetrating of the object to the brain and uh, which uh, which further leads to the disruption of the normal function of the cns and it delineated into different form in terms of the severity and in the clinical uh, in the clinical scenario it's found that these uh, these the uh, the subject is ranging from mild to severe uh, severe type of the injury has been observed in the cns and uh, in from the recent data from uh, indian head injury foundation it has been noted that uh, more than about 100000 lives are lost every year and over 1 million population has been suffering from serious head injuries so if we talk about what are the causes what are the causes and uh, what are the incidents is coming into the picture the it has been found that populations are experiencing the fall in the home that is basically the aged population are significantly affected by these factors and the second is the traffic crash as the uh, especially in the developing country as the uh, as as the number of the cases has been found it increases due to traffic crashes and the assault sports and blast injury the personnel who is involved is basically into the war zone the important thing is that in number of the I means in the both uh, country and developing developing countries the the personals who are involved into sports and uh, and uh, and the military uh, personals who are involved into the mild head injury the, they are have the different kind of the uh, different kind of the societies has been found and the data whatever we are seeing in the epidemiologically uh, only the falls traffic and assault it has been noted but uh, but the, so another organization like in if you talk into the us the cdc is taking care of the number of the population involved in these uh, incidents 
the important thing just want to highlight here for the military personnel and the recently the study has been noted that uh, about uh, 20 percent uh, military personnel is experiencing the post-traumatic stress disorder which is also known as the ptsd and uh, and uh, and and it's showing that a number of the number of the personnel is significantly experiencing the anxiety and depression so just uh, why i'm talking about because just want to show you that how the brain injury or cns injury is affecting the populations and how these are important to address them so if we talk uh, about the heterogeneity or the clinical pictures means what kind of the populations or what kind of the incidents we are getting into the clinical side so the disease has been noted uh, in terms of localized and diffuse penetrating close the some population has the pre-morbidities and comorbidities with the diseases the factors like gender and age significantly affecting the outcome and genetics and epigenetics is uh, significantly taking uh, uh, taking the influential factors as uh, because these are affecting the outcome into the disease and also significantly affecting the management of disease so in genetics if we talk about apoe and some aquaporin channels has been noted in some populations these are factors are significantly affecting the outcome and also showing they are uh, involved into the connecting link before the chronic neurodegenerative disorder development epigenetics uh, uh, as as we all know that epigenetics factors showing the acetylation and histone or some kind of the changes into the genetic factors and those factors is also involved into the in, in, into the giving the heterogeneity of the pictures in brain injury and the, uh, and the further we, are, we have also noted that uh, populations who is expressing the CNS injury they have the, some kind of complication and severity so these are the factors uh, you can see and uh, the population has can be categorized in different way and uh, that's expressing the heterogeneity in brain injury so uh, just before going to the animal model presentation just want to give you some classical example that has been noted in number of uh, number of uh, countries or some other uh, good uh, uh, good uh, good humans human sample centers so just want to give you the few examples that uh, how uh, how how we design the questions from these study for the preclinical models so in the first incidence uh, they, uh, there is a one good uh, uh, good publication came into picture from david sharp lab and uh, that, that study was led by dr ramlakan singh at all and it published in annals neurology and uh, the group has been used the ts co ligand for the for the tagging of the immune cells into the brain and uh, TSP is the transporter protein which is specifically expressed into the mitochondria of the microglial cells so they used the TSP ligand and they showing the kind of the um, expression of the inflammatory responses in subcortical region like thalamus and uh, and the hippocampus so they use this ligand and in the first time they have showing that uh, in uh, uh, that uh, after up to the single episode of the severe or moderate tbi the over the 17 years the patient has been showing the significant increase into the inflammation into subcortical region so that's the first classical example and got lots of the press news is that uh, that only the single episode of the moderate kind of tbi leads to the chronic inflammation and the microglial is significantly involved into that uh, cascade followed by this the second study is uh, published by smith et al and uh, they used the autopsy brain from the 37 year old uh, males and he he is noted that after single severe tbi uh, at uh, four years uh, at a post-traumatic uh, situation that uh, that in the corpus callosum region they are significant reduce uh, into the myelin content and that is uh, co-expressed with the highly highly activated microglia or macrophage in that reasons so that autopsy is also representing the another kind of the classical example 
that uh, microglia or the some kind of the immune inflammatory response has been involved into the chronic neurodegenerative disorder after TBI. And in recent studies, the, the another studies has been noted into the aged populations and it's showing the dystrophy kind of the immune cells, which showing the uh, distorted uh, exons and distorted uh, phenotype of the microglia. And uh, that study is also significantly noted into the brain that uh, in the aged pathologies, these cells showing the altered phenotype and involved into the inflammations. So the question is uh, that uh, yeah, that how these cells are involved into the pathomechanisms. So these are the observatives what we can find from the clinical studies and uh, and for for the how they are involved at the molecular level. It also reflects the need for the development of some kind of preclinical models so that we can explore these uh, cells at uh, at molecular level. So in the same study has been noted that uh, hypertrophy and dystrophy phenotype of the microglial cells are significantly increases with the age. So these are the class these are the classical example of the patient samples what we observed in from the clinical side. And the key questions for the clinical side just one uh, just highlighted I here. So just uh, give you the things that uh, the key questions like microglia macrophage is activated. The question is do microglia macrophage are the key player for chronic neuroinflammation? Does the microglia macrophage drive the CNS microenvironment? And the question is if it is, then what are the key factors uh, involved in this uh, alteration? of this active phenotype and uh, yes if it is then if we modulate these uh, immune cells the question is that it can be beneficial for the disease outcome or not so these questions uh, is coming into the uh, uh, coming coming from the clinical sites and these can be only addressed and uh, and and it also expressed the need for the development of the experimental pipeline so they are the both arm is uh, is is involved to address these questions so from the bedside we got the questions we address them into the bench laboratories by using in vitro cell culture and animal model and whatever we are observing in this preclinical model then we are going back to clinical sites just for the validations so both arms are uh, play together and then, uh, then, then they involve in some kind of the development of the biomarkers as well as the, as the therapeutic approach development. <clears throat> so, uh, so for the animal model tools uh, in, in the trauma sites, we have, uh, we have the different kind of animal model. We, we develop them for, to predict, uh, to mimic the condition of the brain injuries brain injury patients. So the animal model have can be divided into different sites. Means if you introduce the brain, if, if you introduce the injury into the brain, it can be categorized as the brain injury. And if you introduce the injury into the spinal cord, it can be categorized as the spinal cord injury model. So it also has the different factors like mild, moderate, severe, as we saw in the patient conditions. And the time window means what you are targeting means you are targeting the acute window or the chronic window. It is the important point because uh, if you see the paradigm of the immune cell activations, they are playing different role at different uh, windows at different time points. So this is very important things. Uh, are you targeting to handle them at acute window or the chronic window? So there are some other factors is also involved, which is very important uh, for the animal model developments. Are you targeting the young or the aged population factors or the male or versus for the sex and the genetic background? What are you talking means? Uh, are you taking some of the genetic implication for the disease? So in the trauma, just want to give you the overview that uh, we use the number of the models for for predicting, uh, for mimicking the patient condition in that uh, in that uh, areas, and uh, we use the cortical impact injury model for the contusions. That is the more controlled 
and a model we have observed and it is the most important thing is highly reproducible and low mortality the the blood brain barrier disruption immune cell activation and subdermal hematoma condition can be well studied into these models another models for the axonal injury or the mild kind of injury we use the fluid progression injury model and that uh, first we were using the blastic one and then second we we modulate them by well controlled into the uh, into the com uh, by controlling the computer systems and that protocol has been developed further into the nature protocol and then uh, when we introduced this uh, cci into the spinal cord that is uh, categorized for the spinal cord injury model so these are the tools uh, we, uh, we 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 basically use for the introducing the cns injury model development and uh, my, uh, just want to uh, show you the here the one slide uh, for the mild brain injury because in the cns injury condition 60 to 70 percent so populations are coming into picture from the mild brain injury conditions and uh, and as i uh, as i showed the first slide is it is caused by the blow or jolt or the or the rapid uh, rapid shake to the brain and uh, beautifully, the Jonathan lab has been introduced the in vitro cell culture model to show you the pathway, show you the mechanism that how the axonal injury is uh, can be seen into the lab. So uh, in the model, he used the neuronal cell culture, human neuronal cell culture model, and uh, he's showing that uh, uh, most of the injury is regenerated by cells over the time, but some axonal showing the bulb-like structures and uh, and, and the neurons got damaged. And he also introduced the uh, in vivo model and showing that this axonal damage is further leads to the cognitive dysfunctions. So this is the couple uh, couple uh, couple association between the number of the pathways involved into the mild brain injury. Just to simplify them, I just make the one more slide for that. And yeah, if you see the big uh, boxes, how the how the patients are suffering or how the how the clinical pictures are coming. So the after the after the mild brain injury, which is more scattered throughout the brain, the clinical conditions like cognitive uh, cognitive dysfunction, like poor concentration, memory loss, and slurred species speech, and the somatic dysfunctions like numbness, seizure, and chronic pain, and in emotional terms, the sleep problem, appetite, or nervousness. Those these are the key factors can be seen into the mild brain injury patients. So uh, for the mild brain injury, there are the, some preclinical model here is also being used uh, in number of the labs. So the, 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 same, the same kind of the instrument for the cortical impact injury, but here the, the skull is impounding by, uh, by the outer side of the bar. And when this episode is repeated, then it is the uh, it is used it is being used for the repetitive mild brain injury here. So recently, from Dr. Alan Fadham from Baltimore has been uh, well uh, standardized these models that after single TBI, the chronic neurodegenerative pathologies can be seen in this model, and the beta amyloid and tau pathologies increases after the after the severe TBI. So there is a one pictures coming in here that uh, that mild vein injury can be a connecting link for the development of the CTE or the kind of the Alzheimer's disease. I am not going to the detail for the molecular or for other signaling aspects. Just want to give you the pictures how these preclinical models are important to address the key aspects and can be useful. So, uh, and to validate them, and there are another clinical studies uh, come into the picture in 2014, and 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 the and the and the patient sample has been taken from the Dave Dorson, which is the football player, and the study has been noted uh, very well that uh, after the repeated TBI, the the chronic pathologies like. Uh, like uh, accumulation of the phosphorylated tau in the brain and as well as the, if you talk about the behavior analysis or the memory loss and aggregation or dementia kind of the symptoms has been observed so this is the classical example that recently has been noted that uh, 
that uh, mild brain injury could be uh, one of the classical uh, classical way means can be considered the important way for the development of the chronic pathologies so there is one more studies has been noted by the by the same group uh, dr alan fadan from the baltimore and he used the both the patient samples and as well as the preclinical model and there is a overall the pictures uh, and then we can see that brain injury is not limited to only the one part but it also is also affecting the peripheral part of the um, body systems and uh, and by using the uh, by using the deep uh, genomics and proteomic analysis and involve and deep analysis of the immune cells it has been noted that a number of the uh, organs are significantly affected and uh, uh, after the traumatic brain injury like the cardiac dysfunction or hepatic dysfunction or renal injury has been noted just want to highlight uh, one recent studies has been noted by md phd fellow the alisma has been beautifully noted that uh, by using the both the pre clinical side of the samples as well as the animal model systems she has noted that the gut microbiota is significantly altered at the post traumatic conditions and the bacterial species uh, the key bacterial species by the detailed gut microbiome by using the genomic analysis she has noted that uh, the key bacterial species are altered and, and associated with the immune cell activation and as well as the and as well as the causing the alteration in the gut permeabilities so these are why i'm talking these things these are the classical example has been noted in overseas countries and uh, preclinical model is taking as the well tool to explore the key pathways which can be used for the clinical research so and there are some tools what i am developing here in our institute so there is a one tool for the neuro behavior outcome why neuro behavior because it is the fun, final outcome uh, after the different immune challenges we can explore the changes into the cognitive and motor dysfunctions so we uh, so we developed in our animal house the, there are some key uh, test for the neuro behavior analysis anxiety depression motor cognition and learning and memory test spatial memory test and and the recently the phd fellow anjali singh has beautifully developed that pain mechanism pathway pain mechanism model and he she also categorized the result for the young and aged animals by using the hot plate and handmade uh, handmade filament for von frey test so how these are uh, tests are important and we uh, we can correlate with different number of other disease including the cns injury like the pre dementia alzheimer huntington's and uh, effusion uh, and schizophrenia and the dementia so these tests can also be used for the other test but primarily i am focusing on the immune challenge condition of the brain and just trying to explore the macrophage biology so working on the cns injury component and exploring the pathways mechanism so this is the one tool what we developed here in our animal house and the another tools is the for the cell mapping and functions which can be used in the preclinical model for the outcome measurements so there is a two tools uh, we we got we are getting there uh, the neural lucida analysis for the identification of neuron and immune cell networking and the second is the stereological analysis for the quantification of the cells and also the mapping of the movement of the cells the movement or migration of the cells is a very important aspect because the bone marrow progenitor cells are involved into the repair mechanism pathways and in in different ways these cells are migrate from the source to the challenging sites the challenging sites can be any 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 sites cns or any peripheral organ systems so these tools are very important to mapping of the cells and if we are playing with the cellular phenotype or cellular response their uh, detail analysis is key uh, key aspect to explore these mechanism pathways so these tools are we are trying to standardize here and also working on the 
repositories for the uh, giving the data of the cellular phenotype online and i and david loan is working on there so here from here i just want to use show you the some pre -clin some preclinical studies and specifically focusing on secondary injury progression so in cns injury there is an important terminology is the secondary injury means uh, after primary injury means it's very limited after primary primary injury the event is done there is means it means there are some golden hour but uh, uh, but after that means is very limitation to control them but after that it has been seen that uh, number of the key pathways like cell like caspase dependent caspase independent aif dependent cellular pathways has been observed as well as the neuroinflammatory responses like macroglia macrophage activations so these all cascade is coming into the picture during the secondary injury progression the beauty of this window here you can play with the immune cell activation and and uh, and the things are you cannot you only not you you cannot only the stop the progression of the neuronal cell that but you can also have the window to reverse the changes so in the trauma areas we we basically focusing on the secondary injury progression pathways and we play with the immune cell activation and also try to reverse the pathways damaging cascade and also the neuro and also try to uh, improve the neuro behavior dysfunctions so uh, so then in the primary window we after after the moderate level cci moderate level cortical impact injury by using the seven tesla MRI scanning, we found that uh, during the secondary injury progression, the lesion volume has been significantly increases after the impact, and uh, it has been associated with the microglial activation with, uh, with altered phenotype, specifically the hypertrophy and BUSI. So we use this, uh, these tools, what I showed you before the neurolucid and histological investigators, we used here and then uh, we categorize them in different brain organs and just to just to just firstly to get the idea of what's going on during the secondary injury progression then we isolated the immune cells from the brain and uh, we tried to get the transformation index analysis this is the another in vitro cell culture model it is very important for the screening of the drug molecules if you're targeting any kind of the receptors you have to get the cells first into the battery cells and then you can play with them. all so these are the two things uh, for the preclinical model just uh, want to show you here and before going to the aging component uh, just i included the one slide just to give you the overview how the agents are involved so in the normal brain it has been it has been noted that these beautiful cells are playing into the maintaining the homeostasis condition of the cns it continuously move uh, in different part of the brain and involve into the providing the trophic factors to the neurons but during the aging there is another component is coming to the pictures it's called inflammation and in during that component it has been showing it has been found that these cells showing the senescence phenotypes and involved into the pro-inflammatory responses these senescence cells is also been noted as uh, in another window means they also if you can see the papers it has been noted the priming of the cells so aging is causing the priming of these immune cells and it has been noted that after the immune challenges immune challenges can be of the infections or the can be of the injury so an important thing is it noted that after the brain injury in the age brain the uh, the volume of the brain has been for, has been observed it is strength and uh, the and the chronic pathologies like uh, beta amyloid and tau uh, the chronic inflammation is increases with the age and these prime cells are highly activated uh, and showing the higher secretion of neuroinflammatory markers like uh, pro-inflammatory or anti uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines and these uh, highly inflamed immune cells is feedback uh, to the damaged neurons so these are the kind of the cascades has been observed into the east brain after the tbi or after the mild uh, mild brain injury into the east brain so beautifully the smith et al has been summarizes in terms of the pathological score and showing the association with the ace 
and he has showing that the black one is the uh, along with the aging the the chronic inflammations and uh, beta amyloid and phosphorotide related accumulation is increases into the neuronal cells and that is showing the pathological score is increases with the age but in the case of the mild tbi as you can see in the blue curve there are some pathologies showing the peak but most of the them is resolved in the case of the mild tbi but their threshold is increases and pathology is scoring which involve the inflammatory responses as well as the accumulation of the protein is increases but in the case of the moderate or severe tbi along with the uh, along with the age it has been showing that there is a significant peak into the pathologies which showing the higher accumulation of the phosphorylated tau and also the chronic inflammatory changes and their clinical threshold is also increases so these are the overall pictures uh, in from the clinical side or from the from the observative studies that how aging are involved into the inflammations so by using the preclinical models i am not going going to the deep detail for the phenotypic analysis at molecular analysis but overall we have showing that microglia macrophage is involved in the transition of these two phenotypes one is the classical and another is alternative classical is the m1 like and m2 is the alternative so these transitions phenotype is involved into the different part of the brains and and also playing important role in the development of the chronic inflammatory responses into the aged brain overall the histopathological analysis in the cortex and hippocampus subregions like ca1 ca3 and dz regions that has been showing that microglia has showing altered phenotype and especially the hypertrophy and bc significantly increases and involved into the pro inflammatory response so detailed analysis by using the ngs and uh, and the mr analysis we have noted that into the aged animals the repair associated phenotype which is the alternative phenotype is significantly compromised into the aged brain and the key factors like nadph oxidase which is the ros producing units and especially we focus on the gp91 which is associated with uh, pro inflammatory responses so that's the key targets we observed uh, that could be a important target to modulate these immune cells activations so this is the overall window we observed into the nox2 and just a couple of the slide i will show you that how we trace them at the molecular level so after that to prove that nanodps oxidase involved into these phenotype responses we used the uh, genetic knockout animal and and we observed uh, we observed the changes over the time so in the primary observations or in the in the protein analysis we saw that in nox2 animals the m2 related associated phenotype which is the repair associated phenotype is significantly increases uh, in the nox2 animals and the importantly we observed that another factor the il10 is significantly regulated these phenotypes by using by mediating the phosphorylated stat tree and also it is associated with improvement into the behavior dysfunction compared to the young tbi or compared to the uh, compared to the on um, wild type of the brain injury so to prove that that il10 is the good mediator so we we introduced the osmotic pump into the csf into the ventricle and we use the neutralizing antibody and neutralizes the uh, il10 cytokine over the time and the important thing that we observed uh, that il10 mediated pathway is significantly uh, down regulated what we are observing into the nox2 animals so which prove that il10 is involved in, in into the polarization of these uh, phenotype of the cells so this is the example I just want to show you that we first observed and correlated the changes with the patients tar trying to get the targets then to prove them by using the another kind of the tools like uh, infusion of the antibodies or by using the genetic knockdown so just to show you the things that how the clinicals how the preclinical model being used for to address the key aspects uh, and to address the changes of the neuroinflammatory responses 
so overall if if i will summarize the things that immune inflammatory responses or the cellular responses as the different phenotype like m1 or m2 phenotype which coming to the picture at different times and both phases are very important because they are involved in the maintaining of the homeostasis condition after the immune challenges condition into the aged animal has been noted that pro-inflammatory responses is taking the sinus micro environment and uh, M2 or repair associated phenotype somehow the compromise over the time. The key factors like NOx2, it could be an important target to modulate them. And the important thing is that uh, it is it is good to see that the, the inflammatory response is coming due to the cells phenotype. The question is that what will happen if we remove completely the immune cells from the brain? Is it will be it beneficial or not? So here, from here, the, the question is arises for the cellular therapy or cellular transplantation. So the, another classical drug has been recently introduced for in the, in the field of the trauma, the PLX562, and, uh, and has been given to the orally to the mice and after seven days has been observed that microglia or macrophage population are significantly depleted and after TBI has been noted that uh, the inflammatory responses can be well controlled and uh, and the important thing that uh, to play the cells or to remove the cells it is very important what time window you are touching and the second thing is that uh, the home take from that uh, uh, that uh, that if we compare the result uh, from the at the same at the same or the control level, if we remove the cells, the cell, the the animal showing some kind of behavior dysfunctions. So it also important it also showing the importance of the cells involvement into the CNS micro environment. So so the things are the the home take measures from the preclinical. Just want to show you that. The window is very important. What window you are targeting? Are these windows you are trying to control the damaging aspects, or uh, are you trying to do repair mechanism pathways? So the another thing, the same drug has been introduced for the controlling the plaque formations, and it has been noted that the plaque formations in the cortical tissue can be controlled if we replenish. Uh, the microglial cell populations. The important thing is that if you remove the oral drug, the cells can be repopulated because the bone marrow progenitor cells are involved here and the microglia macrophage is repopulated and showing the, showing the homeostasis condition after a couple of weeks. So these, these things only giving the message that you can play the cells, but the important thing, what time window you are touching. In my experience, I saw that acute window, the both phenotype cells are very important. It doesn't matter if it's a pro or anti-inflammatory because the body has the duty to repair whatever the challenge you will give. But the homeostasis condition is only happens if the everything is the well controlled and communicate together. But after in the aging had been noted in the chronic condition or the later time point when the cells are uncontrolled, the pro-inflammatory response is coming into the picture. So that window can be taken for the repair pathways and can be controlled by some drug targeting molecules. So, um, so there is another aspect. So what I what I'm working and uh, our group and the PhD fellows is working for the viral encephalitis, and just want to give you the few uh, few targets, a few uh, few view views that we have observed by developing the preclinical models of encephalitis. So, what why we are developing the encephalitis? There are some key questions we can see in the encephalitis patients. The patient has means after the viral infection, after the encephalitis, the, the, the good population, the good amount of the populations, you can see they have the movement disorder which go to the lifelong. So the neurotransmitter abnormalities has been observed there and, uh, and there are some key factors and there are some kind of cytokine storm and some pro-inflammatory responses has been observed in, from the clinical side. The question is that, what are the factors involved in this immune cell activation? Are these 
can be modulate and uh, can be modulate at the cellular level or can be targeted by using the some classical pathways like uh, autophagy mediated cell death or the some kind of other pathways so uh, so to address them uh, the, the um, we 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 developed the encephalitis model for uh, for studying the movement disorder and uh, just want to give you those few results uh, that uh, we developed here in uh, in our institute as gpzi and uh, we introduced the j virus infection in the uh, in the cortical regions and uh, we've observed there that animals showing the showing the movement disorders as we have uh, as 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 our group have the experience for the microglia macrophage so i touch that window and just try to explore how these are involved in the brain viral infections and the important thing why the microglia macrophage i touch here because the recent studies are also showing that these cells playing as a harboring unit for the viral infection and viral copies increases in these immune cells so in the immune cells in the brain there are two types the infiltrating macrophage and microglia both are the important targets and uh, i'm not going to touch the infiltrating component because it will take a lot of time so just want to show you that in the microglia macrophage in the open window we observe these are highly activated into encephalitis model and the important thing the in terms of the cell cycle pathways we observe that autophagy flux is inhibited over the over the viral copy increases so the important thing that we found a correlation that uh, that somehow the changes in the classical proteins is associated with the neuronal cell death into the hippocampus region is basically the dg region of the brain so that's kind of the showing the over the some kind of the pictures that how the how the brain is getting challenged after viral infection so to uh, to uh, to explore the further the communication between these cells the another component i i play with the with the ccr2 to just stop the interaction between these cells and just want to see that are these as are these can be somehow the beneficial to control the viral infection or not interestingly we observed there are somehow changes into the microglial phenotype but viral infection cannot be controlled uh, in this particular model so i didn't see any the number of the viral copy by playing the interaction of the immune cells there are there are a couple of reasons first it could be a specific model responses because in this model the encephalitis response showing very high severity in terms of the mortality the second thing uh, uh, the viral infection maybe is taking the bystander way for the neural neural damage is not completely dependent on the microglia or macrophage cells and could be of these cells are directly affecting to the neuronal cells in and the primary impact they are damaging to the neurons and they causing the cell death so maybe there are some percentage proportion in the acute window so the important thing is that as i said the time point is very important so in the particular time point we are touching here only the acute window so we are looking for the develop the chronic phase so where the impact primary impact of the viral copy changes of viral copy when the resolve and then the secondary cascade is coming into the pictures just just will try to see that if we modulate the microglia macrophage communication can be can we improve the movement disorders or can we improve the outcome of the disease the another factors uh, the phd fellow the gajendra is working from two, two to three years and just trying to see the uh, key factors involvement of iron iron is important for the immune cell activation neuronal neuronal repair mechanism myelinations and neurotransmitter synthesis and the iron regulatory protein for example the transporter importer and regulators he is working for the thesis work and he is trying to explore that especially in the macrophage biology how these are key factors are involved in the regulation of this microglia macrophage activation so the overall the window he of he noted here in our institute that uh, the key iron transfactors are changing uh, especially the iron regulatory proteins are changing and then further he isolated the microglia from the animal model 
and he proved the changes that are associated with the infiltrating macrophage or the microglial cells. So there are some therapeutic aspects he is focusing on to modulate the iron regulatory proteins. So there is a, some home take message we can see here that preclinical model give you the another tools in your hand and whatever you are doing the discovery or whatever you're seeing the key components by using the preclinical models can be proof your com concept and can be helpful in bridging of these components one your ideas another yours your clinical phase development but uh, so uh, but the important thing is that we also accept that whatever the seeing you are seeing the changes in the animal model or in the preclinical model, only the 20 to 30 percent can be translated into the clinical components. The things are here. Just want to give you the home take message for the preclinical model. Preclinical model is the very controlled finding, but if you see into the clinical phase, it's very complex. It can be the results can be influenced in terms of the sex, male or age in terms of the age in terms of the genetics in terms of the epigenetics but these factors is well controlled into the clinical model so the use of the clinical model result is very important first you the there is experience means should be aware about how the cells are responding at different condition and well controlled way you just got the good baseline to predict any result the second thing in the preclinical models, results should be validated in number of ways, means in number of the modulators, in number of the genetic approaches, in number of things. So if you if you do the well-controlled experiment, you validated them, you consider the factors what can be influence your result, then you can use those models as a uh, models as a uh, as a bridging the gap between your uh, discoveries and the clinical phase development so there are key aspects uh, the clinical window can be the preclinical tools can be used for the therapeutic window determinations what window is important for the disease the another is the risk factor involvement and the key factors like NOx2 and CSF R1 could be an important therapeutic populations for the uh, modulation of the neuroinflammatory responses. So there are just two slides I included for the future studies, like for the intracellular communications. So the Anjali is working, the PhD fellow is working for the microparticle to explore the communication between the microglia and infiltrating macrophage, just trying to develop as a liquid biopsy tool that can be observed the inflammatory changes in the CNS. And the second is the neuro toolbox development. We are working on there by using the preclinical model, just want to screen the fab region of the antibody just to uh, to just to develop the bioassays assays. and uh, for the therapeutic approach as the number of years uh, I have experience in GPCR and ADP oxidase. Why these two? Because these are the classical target for the cellular physiological response. So to control them at different time windows, the immune cell response or any kind of the cells response can be controlled because these are highly expressed in number of the cells. So these are the things is going on in the lab and especially uh, we will show you the some results uh, maybe then in some another CGR. So so just uh, by focusing on the departmental focus to that that to available the preclinical model for the clinical use at the SGPCI for the development of the diagnostic biomarker, disease pathology, and novel drug treatment. And would like to give thanks to DBT and funding agencies, and also would like to give thanks to mentor, teachers, seniors from the India and outside of the country. Thank you so much.